For decades, it drifted in silence, a machine half forgotten and half mythical, tracing its invisible path through a darkness that no human eye had ever seen. Voyager 2, a fragile spacecraft born in the 1970s, when disco filled dance floors and computers still filled entire rooms, was never meant to endure for half a century. Yet nearly 50 years later, it is still out there, pressing into the void with antennas pointed home, whispering faint signals across billions of miles. Its mission began as a planetary tour, a grand flyby of the outer giants, but what it has become is something far greater. It is not only our scout, but our witness, crossing into realms where no other object built by human hands has ever gone. For years, its story was one of endurance, of survival against all odds. Designed to last a mere five years, it has weathered radiation storms, freezing voids, and the erosion of time itself. It has continued outward, past the orbit of Neptune, into the thin veil where the solar wind begins to falter. But in 2018, Voyager 2 sent home data that stunned scientists. As it approached the edge of the heliosphere, the great bubble carved by our sun's wind, no one knew exactly what to expect. Theories suggested a gentle decline in solar influence, a hazy blur where interstellar space and the solar system merged. Instead, what Voyager 2 revealed was sharp, sudden, and precise. Plasma density surged. Magnetic fields abruptly aligned. Cosmic radiation leapt upward by 70%. It was not a fade into darkness but a wall, a membrane as sharp as a knife. Voyager 2 had crossed the boundary of our solar system, and it had shown us that the heliosphere is not a vague frontier. It is a barrier, alive and responsive. Where textbooks once described it as a misty edge, Voyager's data revealed a cocoon that expands and contracts with the moods of the sun. During peaks of solar activity, the bubble swells, pushing back the interstellar medium. During lulls, it shrinks, exposing us to higher levels of radiation from the galaxy beyond. The implication was sobering. This protective shield that wraps our fragile world is not stable. It breathes. It flexes. And it can fail. Even more curious was the discrepancy between Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. Though they exited in roughly the same era, Voyager 1 crossed the boundary at about 119 astronomical units from the Sun, while Voyager 2 crossed at 121. That difference was not random. It revealed that the heliosphere is not a perfect sphere but a dynamic, shifting form, distorted by pressures we barely understand. It is not a static shell but a living frontier. But it was the magnetic field data that unsettled scientists most. Voyager's instruments found that the solar magnetic field, extending outward from the Sun, aligned almost seamlessly with the interstellar magnetic field beyond. By all accounts, this should not have happened. Models predicted turbulence, chaotic blending, clashing angles of force. Instead, the transition was clean, as if two invisible structures had been sculpted to meet. That precision raised questions too large to ignore. Was this alignment a quirk of physics? Or had our solar system drifted into a region of space unnaturally ordered? Some wondered whether this boundary might act as a filter, organizing what passes in and out. Others dared to ask something even bolder. Could such precision suggest intention? Could we be standing at the threshold of a galactic design? Then, in 2019, the probe fell silent. Without warning, Voyager 2 stopped transmitting. More than 11 billion miles from Earth, no human hand could reach out to fix it. For hours, there was nothing but absence, the kind of silence that echoes louder than sound. And then, almost inexplicably, it reawakened. Systems came back online. The probe resumed its steady stream of data. NASA explained the event as a temporary fault in its aging systems, but buried in the signal were anomalies, electromagnetic spikes that did not conform to any known interference pattern. 
Some suggested cosmic rays. Others remained uneasy. The blackout came too soon after the crossing, too perfectly timed to dismiss. Not long afterward, Voyager 2 began detecting something new. In the plasma surrounding it, low-frequency oscillations pulsed steadily. They were not chaotic, not turbulent, but rhythmic, repeating every 13.2 hours with uncanny regularity. This was not solar wind. It was not the random churn of cosmic radiation. It was something else, something stable and deliberate. When the oscillations were converted into sound, the result was eerie. They resembled a heartbeat. Not mechanical. Not digital. Something deeper, organic. It was as though Voyager had not stepped into emptiness, but into a larger organism, a structure of space that seemed alive. At first, scientists cataloged the fluctuations as anomalies. But then patterns began to emerge. Voyager's plasma instruments showed bursts of energy at intervals that, when mapped over time, formed a spiral. The sequence was not random. It followed the mathematical elegance of the Fibonacci ratio, a proportion found in seashells, sunflowers, hurricanes, and galaxies. Was this natural resonance, or something more? For the first time, a quiet debate began. Was the spacecraft measuring physics, or was it being answered? A minority of researchers began referring to the phenomenon as a response field. If so, then Voyager 2 was no longer a passive observer. It had become part of an interaction. The mysteries deepened when Voyager's magnetometer recorded something no one expected. Beyond the heliosphere, the magnetic field did not fade as predicted. It inverted. Space itself seemed to twist around the probe, bending in ways that classical physics could not explain. Some suggested lensing effects. Others speculated that the heliopause was not a wall but a kind of window, one way, directional, filtering what entered and what left. If true, it meant our solar system is more than a bubble. It is a shield. A shelter. And by crossing through it, Voyager may have announced us to the greater universe. Then, impossibly, Voyager 2 began transmitting logs it was never programmed to send. Data from years earlier reappeared in new formats. Subsystems thought dead flickered back to life. Gyroscopes realigned with constellations the spacecraft was no longer near. And among the data were images, flickers, distortions, blurred lights and shadows. Shapes that did not match Voyager's surroundings. They were not transmissions of now, but echoes, as if the spacecraft was not only listening but also replaying something stored in the very fabric of space. Could the vacuum itself be an archive, carrying memories of past events, waiting to be uncovered? Voyager's transmissions hinted that space is not empty, but layered with information. Voyager 2 was never built to find meaning. It was a machine meant to fly by planets, to take photographs, to measure plasma and magnetism. But what it has revealed denies randomness. The heartbeat in the plasma. The spiral in the void. The inversion of fields. The memory imprinted in the silence. These are not the signatures of emptiness. They are the signs of order, of structure, perhaps even of communication. What Voyager 2 has shown us may be more than science. It may be philosophy. The edge of the solar system is not the end. It is the beginning of something else. A frontier where silence speaks, where voids pulse, where the universe seems to breathe. What lies beyond is not simply more emptiness, but perhaps an awareness, a presence, something vast enough to respond in patterns of energy, magnetism, and time itself. We believed that leaving the solar system would take us into nothing. Instead, Voyager 2 has revealed that the nothing is alive with patterns we cannot yet decode. And maybe, just maybe, we were never alone in the dark at all.